November 20th, 1980 in Lake Prignor. It appears to be a normal day in Louisiana. Nine miles north of the Vermilion Bay lies Lake Prignor. The beauty of Lake Prignor is noted by its wildlife, its beautiful romantic and beautiful scenery, and its botanical garden. Even though the lake has its mystique and its beauty, there are those who were not interested at the time in its beauty. Hired by Texaco, the Williams Brothers Oil Company at the time was in town and they were looking for oil. Beneath the lake lies a giant salt dome, which means oil is somewhere near. Earlier reconnaissance showed oil at the tip of the dome and the Wilson Brothers were supposed to drill down to it. The employees of the Wilson Brothers were very experienced and knew all of the tricks of the trade. Drilling for oil is an extremely dangerous job and can have unprecedented consequences, including dangerous accidents, and today the workers are about to experience one such cataclysmic accident. Early in the morning at around 12.30 a.m., the drill gets stuck at the top of the salt pillar. Although at a depth of 1,230 feet, this was nothing new for the workers as they'd handled a situation like this before. As the workers continued to try and free the drill, it was fruitless. And then suddenly the drill tilted to the left and there was a loud popping noise. This was an emergency situation and the workers knew it. They had to evacuate everyone. Even the barges were cut away from the platform. The workers were right to evacuate the platform as it began to sink. A couple of minutes later, the platform and everything around it flipped over and disappeared beneath the lake. The oil drilling platform is a massive structure, however the lake is only 10 feet deep so there's no way it could have swallowed the entire platform. Workers were even more amazed that the boat that they were on was being pulled back towards where once the platform stood. In an effort to save its crew, the skipper pushed the throttle forward. As it turns out, the sunken platform is just the beginning of a series of cataclysmic events that are going to happen this day. A giant whirlpool forms at the spot where the platform used to be, sucking in trees, debris, and anything else around it, including ships. The force of the water is so strong that it forces the Del Cambry Canal to re actually reverse its flow, forcing the water that normally goes into the Gulf of Mexico. Onlookers are astonished. Onlookers would later say that it appeared that the bowels of the earth had opened up and that the end of the world was near. While the residents in the area were astonished at what they were seeing, nothing could prepare them for what was unfolding beneath their feet. Under the lake, there is a massive salt bed, which intrudes up through the underlying crust. This is what weakened. In the United States, salt domes are frequent, especially along the Gulf of Mexico coastline, most of them in Texas and Louisiana, and all of them were exploited for salt mining. Initially, mining was conducted at a depth of 800 feet from the top level. Over time, the primary salt production moved deeper to over 1,000, 1,300, and then 1,500 feet. At its deepest point, some of the tunnels were over 100 feet wide. Just like oil drilling, mining has its dangers, from outbursts of dangerous gas to ceiling collapses. It's a very dangerous job. In salt mines, miners pay special attention to the pillars since that's what actually supports them when there are hundreds if not thousands of feet below the surface. On the date of the accident, November 20th, 1980, 55 miners descended to the 1300 foot level of the mine. As the miners continued to mine transporting the rock salt to the surface, their operation was disrupted. As the miners continued working, the operation was disrupted by a sound from the corridor. As one of the engineers investigated the sounds, he noticed that it was coming from drums being carried by knee-deep high water down the corridor. As the engineer knew the dangers of water seeping through the salt, he called for a full evacuation. The miners, who were well trained, 
had practiced these exercises many times before. However, the elevator used to transport them back and forth only could carry eight people at a time and was extremely slow. To add insult to an injury, the workers working on the bottommost level had to wade through water and sand just to get back to the main hallways. Even though it took some time to rescue all of them, all 55 miners miraculously escaped death. But when they arrived on the surface, they were astonished at what they saw. Once they were on the surface, it was clear what had happened. The link and everything around it was disappearing. As the whirlpool continued, it became obviously clear that the drill bit had gotten stuck. The reason it got stuck is because it became embedded in one of the salt pillars at the 1300 foot mark. The funnel then allowed water from Lake Pinyon to leak into the mine. Once the salt pillars had become so saturated, it caused everything above the mine in the lake to collapse. In just three hours, all 3.5 billion gallons of water drained from the lake down into the mine. Aside from that, the water's current was so strong that it dragged 11 barges into the pit as well. The crew on an abandoned tugboat barely managed to survive before it was pulled into the vortex. What once was a lake was reduced to a big hole with a 400 foot geyser. Because the water was traveling through the tunnels faster than the air could escape, it caused a massive explosion. Due to the water being compressed, it burst out through the mine's air shaft. This caused the water from the Gulf of Mexico to rush in, causing a 150 foot waterfall, the tallest in Louisiana. Due to this, for the first time in history, water in the Del Cambre Canal flowed north. In the aftermath, 10 barges, an oil rig, a tugboat, trucks, and multiple other items remained trapped in what was once the mine. The force of the implosion was so great that it changed a 10-foot lake to a brackish watered 200-foot deep lake now, the deepest in Louisiana. The entire ecosystem was changed, even inviting new species of fish into the area that had never lived there. While many questions remain unanswered, one being, why hadn't the engineers known that they had been drilling directly over the top of a salt pillar in the lake? In the end, Texaco, Diamond Crystal, and Live Oak Gardens all paid out a respective $32 million settlement in damages and losses related to the disaster. In closing, with so many unanswered questions, the mystery of what caused the disaster at Lake Pinyon may just rest at the bottom of what once was Lake Pinyon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Video Fit Solutions out. God bless.